Hello, Painful Mass here. Uh, sorry about the start of all my videos being weird like that, but I'm just too lazy to edit that out. Um, okay. My first video about biases is on rationalization. This is probably one that most people are already familiar with. Um, and I'm going to probably just go along and they'll get more obscure and things that are, people are less familiar with as I go on. According to the DSM, the definition of rationalization is when the individual deals with emotional conflict or internal or external stressors by concealing the true motivations for his or her own thoughts, actions, or feelings through the elaboration or reassuring or self-serving but incorrect explanations. So basically, rationalization is a form of reverse reasoning. You expect something, and then you get evidence that goes opposed to it, so based off of the results, you come up with a way to make the original expect expectation compatible, even though it wasn't. To point out the absurdity of this, let's clarify what this really means. Basically, you know what the conclusion of your argument has to be. So it is like writing an argument where you write at the bottom of the page first a conclusion, say, Therefore, Bob is going to propose to Alice on Friday. Since you started with the conclusion, you are going to construct an argument that is aimed only at that conclusion. You'll ignore all evidence that goes against it, and you'll manipulate whatever you have to work with to fit with that conclusion. This is a clear bias, and essentially tied in with confirmation bias, which I'll do next time since they go hand in hand. When you work this way, what you don't realize is that if you had taken the evidence at face value with no preconceived conclusion, you are very likely to have come up with a different conclusion. It is important to note that when you do this, you won't feel like you're doing it. The filtering of information that goes against the conclusion will be subconscious and you'll feel like you constructed a fair, honest argument without skewing. I'll talk about the evidence for this happening in the next video because again it goes along with confirmation bias so I may as well just present it there. Uh, here's the classical example of religious rationalization. A person prays for something and then it doesn't happen. The classical response is then to say something like God works in mysterious ways or your favorite stock phrase that you have prepared for when prayer doesn't work. Uh, I don't want to dwell on prayer because it will be better to focus, it will be a better focus for other biases. The more interesting example to me is rationalization with holy books. Let's take the Bible for example. We don't have to go any further than the first couple of sentences to run into major problems. This is supposed to be the inerrant word of God, and he says that the universe was created in six days. Now this is just not true. We know this as much as anything we know in the world. So what happens is the fact of the creation of the universe taking billions of years goes in direct conflict with the belief that these are the words of an all-knowing God. There are lots of rationalizations that happen at this point. A common one is to claim that the Hebrew word yam can mean a literal day or an unspecified amount of time, but let's just focus on a few of the problems this causes. First off, this has not been the traditional interpretation. This only came about when we learned that the universe was not created in six days. So it is clearly a reaction to the scientific knowledge that contradicts the old 24-hour day interpretation. Second, why in the world would the writers of the Bible intend for the meaning unspecified amount of time, yet indicate six different of them? On the first unspecified amount of time, blah happens. On the second unspecified amount of time, blah happens. What could this even mean? On the unspecified amount of time, really? It wouldn't have been phrased that way if that was the intended meaning. It would just say, first God created the universe and the earth, and next he created blah, and then he creates blah. There would be no unspecified time block. Six unspecified time blocks is the same thing as one longer unspecified time block if you really want to get technical. So why specify six of them? Anyway, 
This brings me to my next point, that God creates daylight before he creates the sun. Again, the scientific fact that the sun gives daylight goes against this. I've heard some rationalizations of this as well, but honestly, they were so pitiful I can't actually remember them anymore. But you see my point. Now, I want to try to get you to see that trying to get the Bible to fit a scientific worldview that contradicts it is really a rationalization. Here's why. There is a simple logical explanation that explains the entire reason these problems exist. Here goes. A primitive man made up the story in order to describe something he didn't understand. That's it. That is the perfectly logical explanation. So in particular, he came up with a story to explain how the universe came about in Genesis. It was not authored by some divine being, just some man who was confused or wondering about the universe. So in order to see that this is truly rational conclusion, take any other religious story that other than your own and let's see if you believe this explanation when applied to that. Why did the Greeks believe in Zeus? Do you believe that Zeus is a myth invented by primitive people to try to understand where thunder came from? That is, that's what you're taught in schools nowadays. That's how accepted that this explanation is for that myth. Uh, so what if someone believed in Zeus nowadays and you told them this explanation? Then they came up with some way to interpret the story involving mistranslations and literal versus liberal interpretations, blah de blah It would be pretty clear to you that all that's happening is they are coming up with reasons after the fact to protect their belief. In fact, for every single religious text on the planet, you would have no problem accepting this simple explanation for why a divine being didn't author the book. But as soon as the explanation is offered about your text, for some reason this explanation doesn't seem to fit. You come up with ways to defend it. Why is this? Well, it's because it's a rationalization in order to protect your beliefs rather than trying to get to the truth of the matter. In fact, these problems exist so much in the Bible that a huge portion of modern Christians can't rationalize them all and just take a gigantic rationalization to cover them all at once by saying the Bible as a whole was never meant to be interpreted literally and hence the entire thing must be approached with a very liberal interpretation. Uh, just see my biblical interpretation video for my problems with that view. So in conclusion, I just want to re-emphasize that rationalization is a subconscious cognitive defense mechanism. I am not at all calling religious people dumb or irrational. They have very little control over this process. They aren't intentionally coming up with unconvincing excuses. To the person rationalizing, these excuses feel very convincing and true. But I hope by clarifying how this works and how it comes up, some people will be more willing to look at their beliefs and seriously try to figure out if they have been subconsciously rationalizing. The ironic thing about this video is that any time I said anything in it that pertained to someone, they probably rational rationalized away why it didn't actually apply to them in order to protect themselves from becoming aware that they rationalized their religious beliefs. Thanks for watching.